Hello everyone, my name is Shem and welcome to VBX Kitchen. Blender series video 3. Uh, today we are going to create our first pie side GUI. I got some requests regarding creating pie side GUI inside Blender because some of them are crashing, some of them are pumping the CPU like crazy, some of them are blocking the viewport. I just have a point about creating GUI using pie side inside Blender because Blender is not actually built to be capsuled into a, an object that you can later pass it to the tool that you created. The issue here is that when you create a tool, it's literally like a separated application. The only thing in common is that we can import the Blender Pi module and use the functionality inside it to interact with Blender. I will just jump in and start creating our first GUI in Blender. Um, continuing to the last uh, video, I think I showed how we can download um, Python modules and add it to our uh, custom folder in our external pipeline. Um, what I mean with having a Blender Extender Pipeline folder is basically this folder will be shared in the network where all the artists have access uh, to it. If you see me uh, hard coding some parts and stuff, it doesn't mean that how it looks like in Pipeline. I'm just showing it uh, for the meantime because videos will get so long if I'm trying to do every step in the Pipeline. But later I will show what I mean by uh, creating paths in an environment variable and loading it inside Blender which makes it easier later if you want to sell the pipeline or if you want to move the whole pipeline to a different server so all what you need to do using the um, uh, active directory that you just input a new um, environment variable for the new path and done everything's still working run the last time we created our add-on my first tool um, one thing here also that you can actually do is you can create your own category I just found out this it's a new thing that you can do actually. You just write down, okay, I will just call it VFX Kitchen, and then you have a whole category of VFX Kitchen. But I prefer to keep it as a development because it's make it more clear. Another step, uh, import lab uh, library, which can import the reload function. Basically, um, we will need use this a lot of times when we are creating our GUI, because every small change you make, you want to see it. And you don't have to close Blender and open it again so you can get the updates. And that's why I'm putting this reload function here. Um, and here I have just to uh, reload the module that I already imported from here. So that's basically every time you unload the script and load it again, it will just reload the whole um, children. Um, okay, next thing we have to do now is let's create my first GUI and inside it again we need an init file .py, and we need the GUI itself and for example this tool I will call it my first GUI UI.py um, here is our init file again sorry and we need to import this time my first need to import my first GUI and inside my first so I can literally copy what I did last time in my um, first tool so here we have the init and this init will have um, let me just get it from my prepared script we need to create the same operator like last time import UI from UI, uh, types import operator uh, ID name uh, my first GUI and this will be my first GUI um, okay so um, if you ever developed any tool or any UI using Qt by side by Qt whatever um, you have you know that you already have to have an application instance running and then you start to load your own widget and in that case we are trying to check if there's any instance and then we are loading our widget and if there's no instance running then we just create a new instance so I think we also need to import sys here yeah, yeah import sys and very simple tool that was my naming for this one so this time I will just call it my first GUI 
and again from here import my first GUI which is this one and this file is literally empty that's where the PySide UI will be placed um, so now that's a very simple operator inside our tool and uh, we need to rename this one my first GUI operator which we will use it here again the same mistake um, yeah my first GUI dot my first GUI operator um, yeah we are good so far and I need also to reload my first GUI which is more important for me now so now uh, we will have a crash because there is no my first GUI here QT widget is not already uh, imported and it's miserable so let's do from pi side 2 import QT widgets that's what we need so far and I think we are up to run now but this one I will just comment it for now because there is actually no GUI here but I need to check if it will crash or not so go for development our add-ons, zack, zack. Okay, cannot open my first GUI. That was a typo mistake. So from here, import my first GUI UI. That's the problem because I don't have my first GUI UI. Now, it works. Prince Yo, nice. Um, okay, so now we are clear what we are going to do next. So this, this operator is basically calling the UI and this is the UI which has no idea uh, has no idea about Blender. So that's like a native by side UI. You can develop it whether on the desktop side, like you don't need to have Blender open or anything. But the functionality inside it, you need to, of course to have Blender module. So basically, you can also build Blender as a Python module and using it from also external side. Um, okay, so let's start building our GUI from by side to import Qt widgets. Qt widgets. Qt core, Qt GUI, and then we have to create a new class for uh, what you're going to call. Mm, I will call it my GUI. That, that's simple. It's not clear the definition of the class of the of the variables, but um, if you are creating a specific tool, you have to rename it correctly. Just an advice. And this one will be basically a widget. Let me get my file from here yeah so it's qt widget dot q widget and we have net self um, you know, my we have net self uh, we don't have parent in this case and that's a problem but you know, but anyways <laughs> q args q word args and then we have, let me just do pass here, and I need to do super my GUI and then self dot net. That's it. Well, we're supposed to have parent here, but um, we don't have parent. But maybe in the future, if I found a new way of creating GUI, then you just need to change this parent thing. Then I will call in a UI function. And then I will create the, the init UI function, def init UI self, and then uh, I will just set up the layout. So self dot set layout qt widgets q uh, vbox layout, and then self dot layout add widget uh, qt widgets. Q push button hello from VFX kitchen. Let's do some tricks. Dev uh, size hint self return QT core U size 300 by 300. So that's basically the size of the GUI. And usually, after we are knitting this one, we have to do self to show. Now our GUI is ready. And here, uh, my first GUI, no, it's called my GUI. So it's called my GUI. So my first GUI to QI, but my GUI. And I think now we are ready 
to run. Let's restart Blender. And now let me check. Development, VFX Kitchen, loaded. And now if I try GUI, my first GUI, and it works. So that's our first PySide GUI. As I told you, it's literally separated from Blender. So if I click here, I still can use Blender and I can still do everything. But it's just somewhere else. And um, that's something annoying in Blender. So for example, if I open the preferences window and then I go to the viewport, just gone. Because there is no parenting. It does not know where is your parent, so it always stuck with it. Um, so at some point, I would like to show you some of the small tricks that I'm using to avoid this here by um, setting the window flag to stay always on top. And um, I will show you also here something. Uh, we have in VFX Kitchen, Blender GUI Dev, uh, Pipeline, Python Modules, uh, we have Q Dark Style, and Q Dark Style it's um, basically just a style sheet to make your GUIs a little bit darker. Um, and you can basically uh, download it like the same way we did in the last video. So I will just import Dark Style, and let me just get it from here. And all what you need to do is like apply Style Sheet, Q Dark Style, load Style Sheet by Side 2. We need to Im implement one more reload. Uh, inside here, so we need to import port import lib. Uh, we can do from import lib import reload, and then when we are exe executing this one, uh, I would like to reload my first GUI UI. So every execution will reload the GUI. Now again, wow, it works, and my first GUI. And now it's dark, but that's ugly because Blender is br uh, like grayish and this one like more bluish. And in this way, I will go for QDark style, will modify the init file that you have because now we can look for load style sheet by side 2, like the function we are using. So that's a function, and inside it, it's calling a load style sheet function and that we can search for dev style sheet so that's also the function we are using just just a nutshell uh, it creates a file it opens a file which is saved in the resources so, so if you try to look into the, the the module itself you will not find this resource file so i'm just getting it from here i would say uh, it's open uh, let me put it here Style file equals this, and this one in the beginning, and in the end we need also another one. Style dark dot what was the extension? QSS. Let's open this file for writing uh, as SF like style file or file style whatever SF dot write style sheet. And that's it. So now I need to run this function from inside here. But of course, because that's a native um, Python, it will not work until I do this trick by going up here, import sys, and then sys.path.append. And then I will put the directory of my Python modules that I'm using for Blender, which is this one. Cool. So what happened now is that there's the QSS file is out for me now, and basically I can just grab, grab it here, do some changes. Uh, for example, these are the colors for the background, for the foreground, uh, for the widgets, background color, and so on. That and now I don't need this one anymore. I can delete it. I just need to export this file so later I can load my own style sheet. So back again, load style sheet. Uh, by side was true. So here now I can literally replace this file with this file. So 
file file this one I will just make a copy of this comment it out and load this file instead and I don't need to rewrite it again or anything so now it will be load loading the styles from my hard-coded ones for now all right so that was it for today I hope it was helpful uh, so as you can see it's not crashing it's not blocking the GUI or the background or anything and uh, another thing you can play with the style make it darker make it fit in your studio colors and so on and yeah I hope the video was not that long and I did some interruption in the middle because I had some issues importing videos or reloading and stuff but so far it's going fine I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time bye bye now here comes the music boom 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 I'll shoot you at the home boom boom